I'm playing it again because it's so cool looking. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. What happened? There you are eating. Wait, we gotta do this. No eating on the show, Bloss. Keep the eating to a minimum. People don't want to watch you eat. I'm eating though. I'm having a breakfast here. How's it going? Tell me I can't eat it. What, what? And then look at me. I got a whole spread. Look at this croissant. I know it's crazy. What is that fresh? What is that fresh alfalfa? Oh. That is. I'm having some fresh alfalfa. I've been eating, um, trying to eat live, <laughs> live vegetables lately because I want them as fresh as possible. Well, I mean, you know, are, are they organic? They're completely organic. So I don't wash, you know, I don't wash them. I just eat them. Wait, what do you mean? You don't, well, you have to wash them. They've been growing outdoors in the wind. No, it's like a dirt. Oh, yeah, they're, they're in the dirt. Yeah. You well, know, I like to eat dirt insects. too because it's good for my immune system. And uh, also, I'm on the micro feces diet where it's just, you know, any feces that I can't see can't hurt me, actually can make me stronger. You want to rinse micro them feces. off. Rinse them off? I don't want it. Hank, I don't want to rinse anything off. I'll rinse off all the nutrients. Uh, you got okay. Organic is organic. Okay? Yeah. But organic, organic, like with debris and wind and yeah. seeds from insects and bugs and uh, 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 birds and. What's more organic than that? I don't understand. It's so weird. You're so weird. It's Let's so get into the show. Let's get into the show. I can't talk about. It. I hate it when people talk about what they eat. It's the most boring conversation possible. I mean, it's just like such a circular conversation too. Because what will happen is no matter what you say you eat, if you say, I eat only organic growing foods, people are going to be like, there, you're doing it all wrong. Anybody will tell you. Uh-oh, Blas. Wrong to somebody. It's wrong to somebody. Yeah, your diet is always wrong to somebody. Maybe there are some some plant activists out there that don't, you know, want you eating live plants. Ginny says you can't eat anything now. Ginny Sykes is here. Yeah. Ginny. Ginny. I love Ginny Sykes. Love Ginny. Yeah. Who doesn't love Ginny? Oh, punch him in the face, dude. Ginell says that I'm very judgmental today. Well, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to avoid people being judgmental about my diet, if you could call it a diet. Guignol says ducks. Your food, your food intake? What are you talking about? People judging You know what I want to talk about right now? Not food. I don't want to talk about food. I want to fly this so thing. So question. Yeah. You don't want to talk about pancakes? I don't want to talk about pancakes. The other day, <laughs> I was talking about pizza and how everybody loves pizza. Everybody loves pizza, right? But it is the pancake of dinner no, foods. There's no pizza. Isn't that fun? Um, anyway, driving this thing. Who's driving this thing? We got to get. I want to say a couple of things really quickly. Just get this out of the way. 500th episode is coming up on November 3rd. Don't know what the hell we're doing with that. I don't know what we're going to do. I'd like to have it. Congratulations, I'd like, Joel. Thank you, Hank. Appreciate you that. Mean? Hank's in the green room with uh, Boney right now. We're going to have a 500th episode. Can you believe That's it? 500 you. episodes? That doesn't seem it. real, does it? It doesn't seem real. No, it doesn't. It seems kind of like regular. Ginny says she loves us guys and Hank. Wow, well, that's nice. That's not to love, Ginny. That's nice. I like it. Ducks. Ginny is a duck expert. 
I saw Jenny the other day. Oh. Jenny came over to the house. We had a little bit of a powwow in the living room. I, I think I told her that I'm having the 500th episode. Um, we talked about stand up and like what you know where we're going with our careers. That's what we're going to do today with Hank Chen, which is fantastic. Todd Lee is here. Mmm, roast duck. He likes to eat duck. Absolutely like love Jenny. Duck. Jose's here. Now, roast. Do you see we love, like we love roast duck and Jeannie's a duck expert. I love is it. That- by the way, I'm I'm going totally commando today. I just wanted to put that out there. Why would you Lovely. put that image out there for us? Isn't that good? I'm totally yeah. commando. Um, okay, so f- even though it's not Tuesday, yeah, it's it's Bear Ball Friday, I guess, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's how this show's going, I guess. So anyway, 500th episode, I want to have it someplace special, you know, like the comedy store or someplace. So I'm just putting that out there. If somebody can hook that up, if we could broadcast from the comedy we store. We want to have be... a live 500th episode Yeah. with special guests, with special uh, giveaway products. Guests coming guys. back. Uh, grab you know. bags. We got these surprise grab bags. If you take the prizes, whatever's in the bag is in the bag. Yeah. yeah. Could be a diamond ring. Could you know how many guests have, have been on the call. show? Do you know how many guests? I would oh. guess you've had you've had at least two hundred guests, or a little less than two hundred guests. I think there have probably been two hundred people on the show. We've yeah. had about hundred and sixty guests, I think. Richard Gaddis is here. Richard Gannis. Gannis. <laughs> Good dad. Gaddis. There you go. You got his name spelled right. Jose says, yes, the one and only absolutely annoying Jose Salas. <laughs> Terrible. You know, comedy is a lot of times self-deprecating, right? Uh, Todd Lee says, I'm a husky. Love me some rust Oregon roast Oregon duck. Yeah, the uh, Huskies are playing the Oregon Ducks tomorrow. Duck. Looking forward to that. We're gonna have, um, you know, for the for the 500th episode, we're gonna have Todd Lee. We're gonna have Guignel. We're gonna have all kinds of people coming in. Shirts and my drawers off. See, that's why you don't wear them. That's why you got to free free fly, free fly. Oh. Howard is oh here. My God. Howard, help me make this thing happen. Help me make this uh, 500th episode special. Be careful with that gayness. All right, let's get into this thing. Let's breathe. Because, you know, we got to move along here. Move it along, Yubi. So, let's see. Todd says, can you wait to hold it till the evening so I can participate live? I would love that, but I don't know what I'm going to be able to do, when I how I'm going to make this thing happen. But here's, um, oh look, I'm instantly <laughs> Hank is here. Bloss has been replaced. The room <laughs> just has a universal spiritual hey, element. At least I'm better looking. Um, hold on a second here. Hold on. Hank, um, hey. it's so great to yes. see you. Hey, Hank, um, Boney is supposed to like, have, have an introduction for you. Yeah, so, uh, we have an introduction uh, for you. But it, it, since we're gonna he's get in the green room with you, he's, he's not smoking pot right now. Is, is that a cat behind you, Hank? No, no cats in my house. What uh, is that? What is wagging their tail back What's there? What's wagging its tail back there? Is that a dog? Hank, oh, there? oh, that's a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was getting scared. I thought it was if there were no cats in the house and there was that crazy tail back there. What is that thing? Yeah, that's, I was that's like, a dog. That's, that's a dog. your. Why is his tail just only showing? Is his bowl near there somewhere and we can only see his tail? He's a uh, yeah. He, that's his. He that's he. He's got a bone. He's got oh. a bone. Oh my god! He's got a bone that he's that he's. <laughs> I got blossom here too. Just the tail. That was so weird because I was like, maybe it's some kind of monster or something. That would yeah, be yeah. Friday, Friday the thirteenth. It's <laughs> Friday the thirteenth. You never know what's gonna happen today. Hey, it's my friend's son's birthday today. Uh Crazy. lucky, lucky. Huh? Turn fifteen today. Howard says he saw you at the bourbon. Bourbon room, I'm guessing. It says oh, Burbo no Man. The Burbo Man. How'd yeah. I do, Howard? I think he told me, somebody told me you were there with like, I don't know, Kevin Kevin Hart? Is that right? Kevin Hart dropped in. That was weird. That was really? awesome. Yeah. Did he do like 45 minutes or an hour and a half or something? No, no, no. Kevin Hart, did, 
Kevin Hart did 10 minutes. He did. He, he only did 10 minutes. Because usually when the people drop in, they're like, all right, all the other comedians just have to like hang out and listen to this person riff for two hours. That's not what happened. Huh? Yeah. Kevin Hart dropped in and um, Jeremy Piven was pissed. Oh, really? Oh, no. Oh, you upstaged him? Jeremy Piven? Yeah. But, wow. but, you know, he did his time. It was fine. Uh, that's cool. Everyone got to do their time. All right. Speaking of oh, doing see, our that, time. That's cool. Like you, like you said, if Kevin Hart only did like 10, 15 minutes. I mean, that's, that's pretty gracious. You know what I mean? Pop yeah, that yellow. is very gracious. Everybody still gets their time. Yeah, yeah it was a great nice. lineup. I remember years ago when I would do like the comedy store, like Potluck, um, Seinfeld or somebody would come in and they would just, he would just talk for like two hours. <laughs> Like some, oh my God. and everybody else would just sit and there and like, this is great and everything, but I was kind of planning to do some stand up <laughs> and just destroy the room, and then yeah. no one else would get any time. Yeah, and then nobody yeah. else would get any time, and eat up the time and destroy the room. And everybody yeah, afterwards would just be a letdown, you know, because they're not Jerry Seinfeld right. or whatever. You don't have right. electricity totally. in the room. Yeah, every, everyone else with their three their three minutes stats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jose says he dropped into a room once and the police were called. Wow. Oh my God. That's pretty cool. That must Jose, have been the most dropped in the room? Jose is a um, is a funny guy, but he's not a comic mm. yet. A lot of our mm. ch chat what a room. Joke. It's a, pretty a lot good of our joke chat right room there. people end up on the stage. This is what happens. Mm. Hey, you two gotta remember that when you make it big and you're big time, you can't mm -hmm. be just dropping in rooms and doing two hours. You know, Hank have is some, already some, uh, big time. Hank is big time, some, uh, man. No, He's got no. A, yeah. Yeah. You should be dropping in rooms and just being like, here we go. Okay, so it's breathing time. We're going to breathe here with healing vibrations. Hey, so you breathe with it, I like me. Okay, okay. We're going to breathe through our nose, out through our toes. We're going to hold it for a minute. So here we go. In through the nose. Right now, for example. It's bringing me back to my hold journey it. through Thailand. I remember one specific go. day. That's <laughs> right. Scooting around the jungle with a heavy downpour. Mm. Let it all go. Loosen it up. Loosen it up. That day at a hidden beach. Let it all out. Completely soaked. We'll do in the two rain more quickly so we can get to our interview. We okay. jumped right. Yeah, we got to get to the interview. Right, yeah. Travis is talking behind us about his trip to Thailand. If you go to Healing Vibrations, you can hear him talk about that. I vividly remember the sight and Travis sound. Travis, in through the nose, guys. Right now. Come on, let me birds. Breathe with us. Old. Just our eyes and ears above the surface, basking in the silence. Let it go. <laughs> Let it all out, out of your diaphragm, no, out of your feet. Forget that feeling. Out of your throat. Uh, I hope this sound ooh, is bringing up some gonna make me very relaxed. <laughs> Todd says we end up on stage or in prison. Same, same. I'm prison sure prison is a stage of its... Of its own, I guess. Same, same, or sing, sing. Same, same. the nose. I'll leave you now for the rain and singing balls. Hold it. Be well, vibe tribe. <laughs> Travis is good. Let it go. Howard said Hank finished his set, and no host came, so he did an amazing physical closer. Is that what happened? Oh, nice. That I did. That's awesome. So you're the closing act, no host came up, and you just closed the show. What did no, you do? I, I closed my set. What did you do oh, that I was physical? My... It was just a physical closer. It was a closer that that required a, a, a real physical element. I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's quite it sounds very technical, Hank. I don't know. It, uh, it does. You had to be there. I don't think I could do that. I mean, that sounds like no. some high-level shit. Yeah, um, I love it though. He, he, the, the moment came, right? Yeah. And he didn't want to. He didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to, you know, go off the track of what his set was. So he just decided to do a physical closing, and yeah, that's improvisation right there, buddy. Sometimes you gotta wing it, right? Yeah. All right. Let's get into this interview. Blossom, yeah. I'll leave you behind. Come on, Bonnie. We're going to get this Come thing on, going. I'm going to do a little intro, intro in and then we're going to bring Hank on because Hank has an amazing story to tell us, I believe.
Okay, so Hank, I'm in the bird bath out here today. So I Hank Chen, I met Hank Chen. Hank Chen's been on the show before. I met him at the Fourth Wall, I think originally. He's he did the show uh, Laugh Therapy, which is our our stand up show. Uh, he's a hilarious comedian. He just has a um, an a full hour on comedy dynamics, and the show is called I'm Not Supposed to Be Here. And um, it is, I watched the whole thing. It's hilarious. And I, I, there's a link in the show notes. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. There's also an amazing story that goes along with this, and I want to ask him about it. We've got some birds here. This is so great. Um, I love birds. Let's get into this thing. Interview Friday with Hank Chen. I'm not supposed to be here. Uh, some of you know that I ride a motorcycle, and exactly a week ago, I got hit by a car, I fractured my pelvis, and I just got discharged from Cedar sinai two days ago, which is why I look fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Seriously, are we even gonna call this a stand-up special? I don't know. One week ago, the doctors were like, you might need surgery, you need long-term health care, you're going to have to stay off your feet for like six to eight weeks. And I was like, you listen to me, let me tell you exactly what I do. <laughs> the words stand up, I was like this, I said, the words stand up are literally in the name of my profession. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, yeah. All right, Hank Chen, here he is. Welcome to Lunch Therapy. Hey, hey. thank you for having me. Oh my God, so I watched your special, it was fantastic. Thank and you. Is it true that you were actually in a motorcycle accident like six days before this thing happened? Six days before it happened, a kid in a car just, he ran a stop sign, rolled a stop sign, he kind of, just didn't he i mean he just yeah he rolled a stop sign like oh my God. he sort of do you, would would you would you mind if we he, rolled the footage of this sure interaction yeah, okay so everybody if you don't if you don't want to watch this him. if you don't want to watch this please turn away <laughs> um but this is I hank boned into him and then oh ran God. right over him yeah. oh my god to watch oh. Oh. oh my god oh my god i don't want to do applause oh. for that but that is unbelievable so you were in the hospital and you had you'd already had this stand-up special days, happening I was, in the ho I was in the i was in this hospital for five days comedy dynamics had already paid me a portion of my advance i had yeah. already started i had already really had shaped and worked on this special for oh months god. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. every, every, all the gears, everything was already in place and it was kind of like, what, what, what are we going to do? Um, and so meetings ha happened over zoom in mm -hmm. the hospital. I was in my gown, you know, on, on zoom and with the producers and they were like, can we get the motorcycle to the theater? And they were like, we think we can get it you know, through the insurance company Whoa. to the theater, get it on stage. And they were like, let's do that. And they were able to get it to the theater up on that stage. Oh and my God. so you couldn't even, happened. you could barely even stand. I could barely, I couldn't stand part of, uh, the part of, part of the agreement of, allowing me to even do part of sorry I, I can barely talk right now P mm. part of allowing me to even be able to do the special was the doctors at cedar sinai had to write a permission slip they had to write a letter stating that um 
I could perform mm -hmm. as long as um, I could, I was capable of performing as long as I was sitting down. Yeah. That, so, wow. so comedy dynamics, it was a liability issue because comedy dynamics didn't want me to circle back yeah. and say that, you know, well, you know, it made for it a really compelling stand-up special. I mean, yeah. I know this is a tragedy that happened to you, but it really made for this extremely compelling thing to watch because I, I can't imagine it was easy to perform because you were probably in a lot of pain, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was on, I was on medication. I was on medication. I had help from... Um, you know, I had, I was in physical therapy mm -hmm. from the nurses and doctors, you know, up until the day of the, of the performance. Like I said, the doctors and nurses had written, a, had, had to write a letter yeah. to comedy dynamics, giving them, giving me permission to perform mm -hmm. this. It's amazing to watch you work through it too, because you can see, I don't know. I'd love to know how this came about. And thank you for and, watching. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, but to watch it and see you persevere and have the levity and comedy and just really embrace it, um, just made for uh, something that was just super compelling to watch all the way, you know, through. And also, you know, some of the stories that you were telling were stories, just really light stories from your life. But at the same time, yeah. this whole, this all, this is all, you've got this, this motorcycle is broken in half next to you. You've got your helmet there. Yeah. And also the, the set looks fantastic. I don't, I, they shot that in, um, what was El the theater? El Portal Theater. El Portal Theater. El Portal. Beautiful. Beautiful. And so yeah. what, did they have the couch before this? Like, was that part of the design or did they redesign it to put that no. couch? Yeah, they, they redesigned everything the week yeah. of. They yeah, brought, it, they brought all the furniture in. So this is so yeah, you're amazing. They, they, they did a great job. You know, you know when he was saying that he had to have his doctor uh, write a note. Yeah, he basically needed a medical release for him to perform. Yeah, that he wouldn't stand. You know, it's the exactly. same with like pro athletes. You get a concussion, they got to have a medical release from a doctor that says. Well, they, they you know, play. someone wheels him out in a wheelchair at the very beginning of the yeah. thing, puts him on the couch, and at the end takes him off as well. Um, Very just, specific I, I got, we got to applaud you for persevering through that. Most people would yeah. be like, I guess we got to postpone this thing. So can you now tell us a little bit about how a stand-up special like this, Comedy Dynamics, they have some of the greatest comedians on there, um, Jim Gaffigan and all kinds of different people that we, we love on yeah. there. And uh, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, they reached out to me yeah. through Instagram simple as that yeah and you have been posting short um comedy routines on instagram do you think they found you on instagram or do you think they found you in the clubs they found it was probably it was probably through clips yeah through instagram yeah i'm yeah. gonna play a clip um of you in an orange suit from instagram <laughs> oh, okay. all right let's do this thing I'm in therapy now. I'm uh, a bit into recovery. I started going to Al-Anon meetings, 12-step meetings, to try to become a little more emotionally stable. Um, my career in comedy is not helping with that. <laughs> you know what my therapist said? She said something really cool. She said that nobody can give or take anything away from you. Love. Pain. Self-esteem. You gotta give it to yourself. It doesn't explain the gonorrhea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was the clap. Okay, so, <laughs> did I take my antibiotics this morning? Yes. Okay, great. No, yes, I'm good. We're good. We're good. Okay. I love that clip because there's a little bit of therapy in there and a little bit of comedy. Um, do you find comedy to be therapeutic yes very much so i think you have to have a lot of truth in your comedy i think uh comedy 
uh, has to be very, uh, you, comedy should be real. I think comedy needs to be relatable. I think that audiences go to clubs to see themselves. Yeah. Comedy want co co comedy wants uh, audiences want to see themselves reflected in the comedians that they watch. Mm. Yeah. You know, and they will laugh when they see themselves. Uh, yeah, when they see themselves in the jokes that the comedians tell. Yeah. So you do a lot of, uh, you know, I, I see you hosting over at the fourth wall or you were, I don't know if you're doing that now, Yeah. but no, how does, you know, it's funny. Yeah, Wait, tell me. I'll just, just a quick pause. Yeah. I still don't, I still don't have a car. So I don't, yeah. I, 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 I have a hard time getting around town. Yeah, because the my I still don't have an insurance payout yet. That's just mm. how long things take. Wow, with this shit. So, anyways, yeah. so as you were saying, how did that help you as a comedian to be hosting those? Hosting? Just see tons of comedians coming through and also doing your own work there. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. It well, first of all, I just saw a lot of comedy, good, the good, yeah. the bad, um, and it worked a muscle. Just because I, I would do it for like seven hours a day. Oh my God, just comedian. So 10 comedians at a time, every hour, seven hours. Yeah. So it means you're seeing like 70 comedians a day. Yeah, yeah, I would do it. I would just do it for in, and this would be sometimes three, four times a week for mm -hmm. Joe. Yeah. So wow. it was a great, great muscle to exercise. It was a great experience. I highly recommend it, hosting. I always liked that too when you were hosting that because the fourth wall is a, is in, this is a place in Hollywood, for those of you that don't know, where comedians go and they work out their material and it's a room full of comedians and a lot of times they're, everybody's paying attention to like what's going on in their head rather than what's going on on the stage. Um, yeah. So there has to be a kind of an energy that happens and, and Hank would go up there and just really like make it like it was like a, like a full-on comedy show a show that, yeah, yeah it's the, you, fun. you gotta be like that right you gotta be you gotta bring that energy yeah. and i think sometimes people don't understand you gotta bring that energy whether you feel like it or not if you're gonna and be the I host think so you have and, to and if you're the energy. host yeah you're the host you have energy. to be what well, yeah you have to bring the energy for the room and you used to always like really make that energy happen, which was really cool. I tried. I did my best. Thank you so much, Joel. <laughs> yeah. You were always a really great comic whenever oh, you nice. came. You always brought great material. You always tried to bring, you know, great stuff to try out, to test. You always paid attention to other comics. So you always brought a lot of positivity to the rooms whenever That's you That's nice up. of you to say. I, li I enjoy yeah. it. You know what you know? I like? Yeah, go ahead. You know what I like, Joel? Yeah. I like that he says it was a muscle that I had yeah. to use. Like I had to, you know, work out that muscle. Yeah. <laughs> In my mind, I was thinking immediately, I was going, what tolerance level this man has? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, to, to listen comedians. to 70 comedians? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What about, what and, about and, Joe know, Menente? Not, every, not, every, not all 10 of them were that good. You know what Joe I mean? Menente, who like owns the place, he must have seen, he must have seen every comedian come through there. You yeah. Know? It's just amazing. Um, all right. So, Let's move on here. I love these graphics. Thanks. Appreciate it. Oh, it's a short film exclusive. Okay, this is a short film exclusive. Here we go. I was like, I was. You. I was. But proud of it, though. I'm glad. Clap for him, too, guys. I love our service members. I couldn't do what you guys do. Seriously, when they came, you know how they come recruiting in 17, when you're 17 in high school, everyone's calling you, right? Trying to get the commissions off of you. I wasn't out yet, but I like knew. And man, every single phone call, I just knew that. Cause I was like, do I have to do boot camp? They were like, yeah. Cause I was like, what if I just want to do computers? What if I just want to tell jokes? They're like, even if you just get a civilian job on a base, you have to still go through boot camp. Like everyone has to do it. I literally at 16, 17, I was already imagining myself doing boot camp and just being like, don't you talk to me like that, right? You get down and give me 20. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I knew I wouldn't, wouldn't survive it. So I'm glad I didn't put anybody in that troop through that. 
I said no. <laughs> you went, so the um, I love the way you work with the crowd too, and I don't know whether you develop that at the fourth wall or what, but you have a real, real um, n- nice rapport with the crowd. It's a little bit contentious. It's a little bit <laughs> agitating, but it's you know you always know the crowd is like safe with you, and and uh, but you you do kind of go there sometimes, don't you? I like. I like talking to people. I, yeah. It's sort of like, let's acknowledge the fact that we can all see each other. Yeah. We're all here. Sometimes there's just 20 people. So let's talk to each other. Yeah. How do you work that kind of, is it just um, doing a lot of shows that you work your, or your crowd rapport? Is there some kind of technique that you use or do you ever learn some kind of technique for crowd work? Uh, I would say the technique that I have is just not being afraid to say hello. Mm. Just, I, and also realizing that they're probably more afraid of you than you are of them. Mm-hmm. The audience, audiences are scared. <laughs> not, but don't you think some people, the people that sit down front, well, maybe they were forced to sit there. But don't you think most of the time if people sit in the front, they're kind of ready for you? You know what I mean? Like they're ready to be hit with uh, a, I'm very, I admit, I don't think audiences are ready for you. I think audiences are kind of, audiences are generally pretty shy. Yeah. They're, they're audiences, most people are not, are not public speakers. They're, their audiences are, don't, they, they, they don't want to be picked on. Mm. They, they're yeah. kind of like, they're like, oh my God, you know, they, they're they like, no. But they love it though. And I, I think people love to be acknowledged. And also sure. for a someone to bit. be a good person who works with the crowd, they have to be super present. They have to, can't be like going, okay, this is my joke. This is, you know, thinking all in their head. You have to be yeah. super observant. One of the sure. things I've noticed with you be and other comedians present. that do crowd work is they really are present. And yes then, you know yes i yeah. try to be very in the moment you know if someone if someone does something or says something um i acknowledge exactly what what they just said yeah you know just like that clip that you just played the i was in that tone i have to i was <laughs> yeah. i have to I mimic that right back to him yeah i like that um, yeah. Jenny Sykes says, Hank, you are so amazing. Um, Aww, Claster fan says, turning lead into gold, comedians are great alchemists. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. I like that. So can you tell us how you put together your special? I know, you know you've taken a lot of different routines and you put them together, but I saw a picture that you had where you had all these post-it notes. I don't know if I have that picture. But anyway, oh. it was on your um, Instagram. Is that how you organize your set? Is through post-it notes? Yeah, I did organize through post-it notes. Um, I, uh, yeah, what I did was, you know, you know the way that, you know how, the way we first. The opportunities that we get mm-hmm. when we're coming up mm-hmm. in stand up yeah. are all five to 10 minute sets. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like those right. Are just, those are just the opportunities that you get. Mm-hmm. It's five minute Three sets, minutes. it's seven minute sets, it's 10 minute sets. And so it's about cobbling those together. Mm-hmm. And then um, in the last couple of years, I started to get longer sets. And then in the last year, I started to get. get sets at the laugh factory and those sets are 20 minute sets so i really started to get a lot of stage time um and it was about stringing those together Mm -hmm. so i just started to create longer stories and creating a through line Mm -hmm. and do you so do you create a story out of all these different sets like you try and link them together or do you just make 
just turns where you just go into a whole new thing. It seemed like you made a, a cohesive story out of it. Yeah, That's what it I like tried to, to create. A, I tried to create a co cohesive story because every because every because my set my, most of the jokes of my most of my jokes are all pretty personal. Mm -hmm. They're all um, you know they're all elements of my life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I can. And how do you practice something like that? How do you, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they have all their bits or whatever, but then to actually like, do you, I, you had a director? Did they give you a director? No, there's no director. There's talk, there's talking to yourself a lot. Um, I ran it. Um, I, so what I did was I rent, Joe gave me space at the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. So I ran it several times in front of, in front of other comics, the whole the full the whole hour for the special. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ran, the, I ran the full hour a several oh, times cool. uh, and I got notes from and other comics. And who'd you, so did you have all, a bunch of comics, comics come and watch you perform the hour? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, with notes. Um, and then um, I ran uh, e even like over Zoom uh, mm -hmm. in my in the hospital. I ran it. Whoa. Really? Um, and the, yeah, um, there um, you get you get help with a teleprompter um, mm -hmm. when with with the special mm -hmm. with notes. Um, oh, they do teleprompters so, as well. So in case you get yeah. lost or something, how many times did you, did you do the show? Did you just do it once or you do it a couple times? You, you do it once. Really? You did I that once. I, I wish you gotten the chance to do it a couple of times. It was pretty darn yeah. sharp though for the whole thing. If they, cause usually these comedians that, you know, they do it like three times or whatever. And then they cherry pick yeah, all the best you, moments. Yeah. You get the chance to do it. Yeah. Even Chappelle gets the chance to do it several times, and you get yeah. the, gets the chance to edit the best yeah. moments. Hmm. So, you guys remember um, Chris Rock, one of Chris Rock's specials? He only did it. They they taped it three times in three different cities. Yeah, like I remember once in that London, one. one's in New York, and once in like New Orleans or something. And then they cut it together. And in each special, he's wearing a different black leather suit. Yeah, so mm. you could see him like he's doing the same. He's doing the exact same routine. That was cool. Moving the exact same way, but he says outfit changes. Well, I mean, people these days, comedians kind of have to ramp it up. You can't just be there with a microphone. You have to have like a theme or some kind of a a, a hook. I mean, you certainly found your hook. It wasn't the easiest way to find it. Do you think no. the show is better? This is a weird question, but do you think the show is better because of the accident? Like, do you think there's a silver you lining mean, at all? The, you mean the outcome of the show, right? Yeah, the outcome of the show. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Uh, yes. Yes. People should do that. I actually, I, yeah. actu I actually do. I don't know, weirdly enough, I don't know if my life is better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, 2023 has so far been a pretty difficult year. Yeah, I'm so but, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. But I... I do think that I've learned a lot. It's been a, you know, it's been a, it's been a good journey. Um, yeah. um, you know, we have yeah. had two comedians on here that had these kind of like yeah. um, life threatening accidents. We had Susanna Spees. I don't know if you've met Susanna before. No. Have you yeah, you yeah, probably very, should connect with her very, because she also yeah. had an accident where she was just going to get a bagel and um, all of a sudden, somebody T-boned her just like you and flipped her car upside down and her wow. arm went through the um, sunroof sun and the car yeah. landed on her arm. Oh, my God. What yeah, happened? so her she was just was pinned. Open. She put her, probably put her hand there as it started turning and then it took her. Took yeah, her and so and she, her arm, she has, she has a condition that is extremely painful. But she is still up there doing the comedy, and she has her, you know, comedy shows that she does. Um, but yeah, she's she, working through she that. Teaches still? She works. She with teaches. Kids, right? Yeah. And she's she's really persevered out of out of the incident, you know, itself. She's been able to just, you know, keep the comedy alive in her and keep yeah. it, you know, uh, going as far as, uh, like wow. you said, teaching stand up and everything. And it's same with you. I mean, I mean that's lemonade out of lemons right there. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. he really did. For his special, so. you know, uh, uh, incorporating what happened to him in his special, that's very personal. You know what I mean? And a lot of people who watch your show, like you mentioned earlier about people, people want to be connected. You watch comedy connect with people. It's so inspiring to see you, to see you doing that. Yeah. It's 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 great, man. I mean, it's horrible, guys. But it's great that you were able to mold it into, you know, something good for yourself. Do you think one of our people said in the chat room, do you think you'll ever get on a motorcycle again? I don't know. I, I'm seriously considering not. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it was such a shock to the system. Mm-hmm. And it was so life changing. Yeah. And like I said, I just haven't had a car. You know, I've really been utilizing the the metro and the bus systems here mm-hmm. in oh, the LA system, which is great. Is you it? Know, is Conover, it great though? <laughs> it is. It actually yeah? is. You know, oh, okay, you know who uses it really well and who who? who is a huge proponent of it? Adam Conover. Do you know? Really? Who he is? No, I don't know Adam, Adam Conover. Adam, 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 Adam Ruins Adam everything. ruins everything. Oh, really? He yeah. used to that? Really? Yeah. Yeah. How oh, interesting. He, he, he posts about it. it. Yeah, it is But I used to, but even before, um, but yeah. even before I, uh, before I got on, I had an accident. I used to take the metro down to Long Beach because I didn't ride my motorcycle down to the Long yeah. Beach Laugh Factory because that mm. was just too long and dangerous yeah. of a ride. Yeah. So I yeah. would take the metro down to the the Laugh Factory. Mm-hmm. Especially there. like in the later hours, if you're set yeah. in the later. You could take the metro down there, bro, well, and you do your shows down there. I mean, yeah. You're be riding a motorcycle. So, what do you think about the Laugh Factory? Is that a great place to do comedy? Because you do a lot of comedy. There. I, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Does it have so, to be clean comedy, or what's the? How does it work with the Laugh Factory? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be clean comedy. I don't know why I Although, had that in mind. I feel, I feel like, just in general, don't go too dirty. I feel like I feel like dirty comedy is a little, like intel. It's it's. It's a cheat. It's a certain audience. It's cheap. Yeah. yeah it's so cheap. It's, it's it's cheap comedy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I could like every every time I've gone to potluck sets, mm-hmm. I can I can you know you can always tell who the amateurs are because the amateurs are always the ones who are going real filthy. Yeah. Greg Wordle says yeah. dirty comedy is too easy. It is. It's true. It, yeah. It's easy, but it's not easy on the audience. Like one of the things that one of the things that keeps me from doing shows sometimes doing like these they call them bringer shows i i love doing them and everything i like having people come but sometimes i have to subject my friends to so much ass eating jokes so many ass eating jokes that it just you know it just i feel bad doing that (laughs) you know what i mean so if if there's more clean comedy up there i can i feel freer to invite my friends to it because I, even if yeah. there are a lot of comics it, it they won't be like subjected to things that are like oh you know what i mean yeah it's it's gross and and just in, inappropriate and it just doesn't need to it 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 yeah it's not intelligent it's not fun yeah yeah a lot of you things know, that the, people the, have the, said on the, our the, show oh go ahead what'd you say Blas? Well, the other thing about you know, going blue, like going yeah. know, dirty is, is a lot of times with comedians too, is if they start there, you got nowhere to go. If you walk on the stage and, you know, like when I was a hooker and I used to suck dick, but with, the, you know, th- where do you go from there? You still got nine more minutes. You yeah. got nine and a uh, half uh, minutes to do. Well, also a lot of the comedians that have come on this show say that um, it's not as versatile as far as getting jobs. Because right. sometimes no. people are like, I want to hire him. He's really funny, but I, I, he's too blue. No. Um, he said, Greg says, I don't like blue comedians. Com- comedy should be intellectual. Interesting. Over yeah. re- reliance yeah. on shock value, dirty comedy is a hallmark of what we're seeing today in films, TV shows, unfortunately. Hey, can I play this clip from the Tyra Banks show? I mean, I'm just it's from your Instagram because I want to hear the a little movie? bit about that. Yeah, the, the movie. Right. Life Size 2. Yeah. Oh, sure. I've just got a little thing because I want to just talk about that for a second. Yeah. Listen up, everybody. 
Who is Mimosa and where are where are your bottoms, young lady? Jeez, it is a drink made with champagne and orange juice. Mm, sounds tasty. Grace. Over here. Hey. Friends. Okay, seriously, whoever decided that brunch should be served this early? It's one in the afternoon. Brunch. Cool. Breakfast and lunch. Brunch. <laughs> uh, are you going to introduce us to your lady friend? Um, yeah, sure. This is my friend, I guess. Best friend. We met last night in a blackout. No, we didn't. The lights were totally on. Girl, you invited your hookup to brunch? Oh, no. I did no such thing. Kick will not leave me alone. Hello. There's Hank. Hi, new friends. I'm Eve. I'm a doll. Wow. People don't usually introduce themselves like that, but okay. Uh, what's happening? What's going on here on your body? This is my evening wear look. Oh. <laughs> Yet it's daytime. I like it. You were on that show a lot. I don't know if I picked the best clip. But, uh, what happened to this show? It was like on Disney and now you can't watch it anymore? It was, so it was a TV movie. It was called Life Size 2 and it was yeah. a Christmas movie that uh, Disney Plus took off their platform. Oh, Cheap okay. See, bastard. I don't even know it's a movie. I'm like, I thought it was a series. Why did they know. take it out the front? It was for children. I get it's it. okay. But it was too. It'll do you think it was too good. racy for kids or something? No, no. It was well, maybe. Yeah. Um. There were did they bring there it were back complaints. Holidays? Maybe. You know what? They could. It was it for freeform. Free, freeform. 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 Oh. Might, might rerun it. Yeah. Right. For the that holidays. Oh, that's they cool. could rerun it for the holidays. They rerun. They've rerun it the last couple of uh, Christmases. Yeah. Usually yeah. at like midnight or something. <laughs> what is the premise of that show? Like it's like she's a doll or yeah. something, and she got brought but back to life two. because. Yeah. It's yeah, two she's, right? yeah, she's a, yeah, she's a she's a she's a doll. It's a sequel. Yeah, the original yeah. one is she's a doll that uh, that comes to life mm -hmm. in it's it's a lindsay lohan movie oh it's a lindsay oh, lohan she did the first one. Oh, okay greg wordless saw it greg wordless sees everything because he watches stuff with his grandkids so that's oh cool. greg, greg saw the movie yeah he okay, saw the movie cool that's cool yeah so yeah right. so so what so what do you see people. what do you see for hank chen like what is your what do you want your legacy to be in your life? Like, what what do you think? What do you see for yourself in the future? My legacy. Yeah, well, that's a big question. I mean, huh? Talking about talking about shows. Yeah. I hope to be on one very soon because yeah. Mama needs money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm just I, I'm saying that right now just because I'm feeling with strikes right now. It's, now it's tough. Now it's not a good. Yeah. It's just not a good time in the world. Yeah. It's I was, hard in the world. I mean, like people yeah. who own shit up in Israel. I know. People, people, people the industry's on strike. People are out of work. People are losing their homes and their houses. Knock on wood. I still have a house. Yeah. You yeah. know. I'm, yeah, I think I'm, things are really hard right now, and people aren't really talking about it because we have a tendency to be like, "I'm okay. I'm okay. Everything's cool." But there's yeah. shit is yeah. just hitting the fan right now. And we went through something very traumatic. You went through something on top of it. But we all as yeah. a as a world went through something very traumatic and we're still kind of finding out what the ramifications are of that. And, and how our lives have changed. I know my life feels a lot worse <laughs> after just my personal life is diff more difficult. You know, things you things mean? are more expensive. I mean things are more expensive. <laughs> Like, after the COVID, you know, like not after gas is more COVID expensive, uh, food is more expensive. Like things oh, seem after oh COVID, yeah, after yeah. COVID, right? And then also, yeah. you know, it's I was thinking, I was thinking, wow, we're in the twenties. What's this? What's this decade going to be called? And I'm like, I hope it's not called the Warring Twenties. You know, because we had the Roaring Twenties. Maybe this will be the right. Warring. And I'm hoping that we're going to turn this around. But it seems like there's a lot of war going on. It's tough too. They were so divisive, you know, with the 
politics and everything too. You know, we're not politics is a war in itself. Politics is extremely looking, war. Unified, yeah. you know, as our country normally would look. You know? Yeah. It is. It's a tough. It's a tough year right now. What do you do, Hank, to like keep your mind uh, in the comedic realm? In the comedic realm? Yeah. Um. You know, I hang out with my buddies when I can. Yeah. Go on Instagram to look at look at funny content. Mm -hmm. um, I in the comedic realm. Yeah. I uh, do you yeah, need to be in the comedic? Do you need to be in a like a funny mind to write comedy, or sometimes you can write it in a in a dark place from a dark place. I you, you know what? That's a really great question, Joel. I don't know if I have the answer for you there yeah. i can i can write it from a possibly a dark place mm -hmm. and sometimes you the, sometimes you wrote your special sometimes, you know you added your special from the trauma that you had you know the, yeah, the that. yeah yeah i yeah. i did you know i mean this the first five minutes of my special were tacked on last minute because right. from a dark place. And, that you know, that's like, not you know, easy grabbing to totally... The doctor, grabbing right. the doctor and telling him that? that that's <laughs> it's not... It's, but, you know, it's not easy to reframe your whole... You know, every little piece of your special, you know, is carefully crafted. And then to write five minutes right at the front and also encapsulate this whole thing in this kind of a theme takes, it takes work. And you accomplished it to great effect i think thank so that's, you yeah i had i had to reframe everything yeah um bob kirk says the world this is hi bob kirk says the world needs more laughter bob kirk comedy so there's a little plug for bob kirk comedy which is we're all i agree do. yeah the bob world needs more laughter that's what we're here for you know in that that's what yeah. lunch therapy is here for that's what comedians are here for is like when things are really shitty we're the ones who are supposed to make things a little better, a little bit better. I think, I think comedy and stand-up has been doing so well these last couple of years because of everything we're going through. You know, like people want to laugh and uh, comedians are having a lot of success right now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because they, they mm -hmm. need the release. People need to go see things and be a part of something that takes them away from the drama of every day. Yeah. Hank, um, I think I'm going to have to wrap it up, but I really want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, it was great to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Joel. Appreciate and also, thank you so much for doing what you do to make the world a better place. Um, the the you being at the fourth wall was a really great it was a really great thing. And I, you know, I hope that you know I'll see you there again. Um, but you might have yeah, moved yeah, on absolutely. from that job at this point. But it it was really no. um, you really made that place special by yeah, taking it you. seriously like that. Because a lot of times yeah, those kind of places can become like a, a downer. But when you were there, you're like, oh, this is going to be good. And you wouldn't remember people's names and, you know, all that stuff. It's, it's important. Tentative, yeah. like you said, a very attentive host. And then I also am just super impressed with what you've been doing, you know, in the acting world and then also on the comedy stage. And it's not a small thing to make a special of such high quality that you have made. And I hope everybody will go out there. There's a link in the show notes. Check out his special. Yeah, and, watch uh, it. Watch it. All right. So now Thank you I, so much, up. both of you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Hold on, Harry. Thanks for um, me. Alexi Sherlock, we're going to play a little video of her. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's a singer in Dublin. Started out when she was 12 years old, just singing on the streets of Dublin. There's a street there where there's a lot of street performers. I'm going to play a little clip from that. Just as our dance break, we can uh, breathe, dance, just enjoy the music. And thanks to you for being here for Lunch Therapy 495, headed towards 500. <laughs> Woo! All right, dance for time. Interview Friday. Hang out, Hank. Hang out. One, two, three, four. There's two people in this that's saying, actually. It's beautiful. I like it. This is a double. It's just on the streets of Dublin. It's like Venice Beach. It's like Santa Monica. I hope, yeah. Yeah, it's like Santa Monica, Portland, right? Promenade. Hank, have you ever gone on the street and, like, done music or comedy? Wait, I know this girl. <laughs> 
You do? Nice. Yeah, she's great, isn't she? I know of this girl. She's so talented. Oh my god, yeah. Yes, she is. I'm just a huge fan, but I'm not alone. There's millions. We only hear this guy, too. He's something else. The guy playing the guitar is going to start singing. I got just go to Dublin just to see them sing. <laughs> and she's, they're still out on the streets just every weekend. It's a drummer too. So. That guy's my idol. Blast, they play like right off the phone. Play any song. Isn't she lovely? 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 Isn't she lovely?